When you think about some of the greatest engineers of all time in history, you might think about Archimedes, Leonardo da Vinci. However, there is someone alive here today who arguably still fits in that list, and that is Elon Musk. When I was watching one of the interviews he did with the everyday astronaut Tim Dodd, it got me thinking, what are some of the mistakes that smart engineers make? And thinking about it, I really came up with six mistakes that all smart engineers make. And you just don't need to take it from me, you can also hear it from the man himself, Elon Musk, who's worked with some of the best engineers and seen the mistakes they've made. My name's Brendan, your structural engineer. Now let's get into it. Uh, questioning the constraints, the one department will design to the constraints of the other that the other department has given them without calling into question those constraints and saying those constraints are wrong. And you, you should actually take the approach that the, the, the constraints that you are given are guaranteed to be some degree wrong. Guaranteed to be some degree wrong. Because huh. uh, the, the counterpoint would be that they are perfect. The, right, which is never. It's, uh, yeah. as you say, like, what are the, what's the probability that this is a platonic ideal of the perfect part? Right. Zero. Zero. Okay, yeah. basically. Yeah. So you could question your constraints. It does not matter if the person handing you those constraints won a Nobel Prize. They are, even Einstein was wrong some of the time. Right. So uh, question your constraints. This is extremely important. So what is Elon Musk saying here? Well, it's really something that I see a lot of engineers fall into, especially when they're early on in their career, not questioning the guidance that they're being given. So a director may ask you to do it a certain way or approach a problem in a certain aspect. It doesn't mean you should approach it that way. It just means that how best they thought it'd be approached. They may not know everything that you know. So just because they've said it to do it this way doesn't mean you should. So what you should be doing is always questioning the things that you're being given and the specifications. Are they correct? Are they missing something? Or is there a better way? Instead of just trusting them and going down that gut. Because going to a smarter engineer is not always the best way to come up with the best solution. And this brings us perfectly into the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for people who love to learn. As engineers, it's something that we love to do. But it's also perfect for those who are looking to explore their creative side. You may have noticed something different. I'm currently here in Modena, Italy with the famous church behind me. Now with Skillshare, it allows me to learn on the go in my own time. So I can take Skillshare as I travel around the world and still learning those creative skills. I've been taking a class by Carly Cakes to improve my vlogging ability and to have more of authenticity into my content. So what is the benefit of using Skillshare? Well, it has ad-free premium content. So you don't get distracted by ads, so you can stay in the zone and keep learning. Skillshare is also updated weekly. There's always new content that you can check out and keep learning from. So why don't you invest in yourself and check out Skillshare. The first 1,000 people to click the link on my description will get a one month free trial on Skillshare. Hope to see you over there. Now let's get back to learning. If somebody can show that we're wrong, I, that would be great. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if, like, if somebody can explain like, wow, you've got a, there is a way to make your design better. This mm. is a gift. Right, right, right. I would be like, thank you for this great gift. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. It's, it's definitely like, a, the worst thing would be like, we want to do some dumb design and stick with our dumb design. Right. That, that would be insane. Right, um, So, So <laughs> I, I would love it if somebody could show how an aero spike is the smart move. Now this one is something that I've seen a lot in my career. We have a lot of smart engineers trying to push to get to the right solution. They're trying to come up with something more efficient and more innovative to try and prove that they're better than everyone else. Being innovative is not always best. Sometimes it's not better to reinvent the wheel. Yes, you should be going back and looking back about how you've done stuff in the past and not just adopting it willy nilly, but just don't innovate for innovation's sake. Have a look at it. Is there a better way? Can I improve on it? Or is this really the best solution? Only the, the third step is simplify or optimize. The third step. This is where a lot of engineers get into the problem of trying to be more impressive, trying to solve more complex problems. Instead of when you can just simplify, drill down the results and be more efficient, more practical and expedite the solution. Just because you can do something that's more complex doesn't mean you'll have additional savings. Yes, you can save a lot of money sometimes, but a lot of the time when you approach it, you realize that you've only had minor savings and the amount of time that it's taken to get to that answer was not worth that effort. And even if you are able to have those savings, is it harder for them to build? Because you may be saving material, but you may have added a lot of additional cost. So always looking about it, am I adding complexity for complexity's sake? Or is the complexity needed? And always trying to simplify. Taking the general approach of if, if, if a design is taking too long, the design is wrong. Yeah. And the, therefore the design must be modified right. um, to accelerate progress. Right. Um, 
uh, one of the most fundamental errors made in advanced development is to stick to a design even when it is very complicated mm -hmm. um, and to not strive to delete parts and processes. Right, right. Uh, it's incredibly important. And well, and you're not, you're definitely not a sunk cost fallacist. You're yeah, like, Mr. Not. This is clearly the new path forward, let's hop on it. Yeah, is and it in the future or not? If it's not in the future, who cares? So what does that mean in our designs? Well, we should always be trying to look what can we remove instead of what can we add? So what you should always be trying to do is instead of adding additional things to your design to make it work, is removing things. And it's only after you've removed as many parts as you possibly can, is you're adding back the bare minimum. And if you're not adding those back in, especially when you're looking at product design or something else, you're not doing enough removal from your design or elements. So you'd always be looking trying to remove elements instead of trying to add it and add that complexity. If you're not uh, occasionally adding things back in, you're not deleting enough. Right. The, the bias tends to be very strongly towards in, uh, let's add this part of process step in case we need it. But you can you can basically make in case arguments for so many things. And for a rocket that is trying to achieve, um, trying to be the first fully reusable rocket, there's never been a fully reusable rocket. People don't understand. Like, right. this is like the holy grail of rocketry. 100%. Okay. And so you really need, you, you have to run at tight margins because if you don't run tight margins, uh, you're going to get nothing to orbit. Right. Uh, so. Uh, so you've got to delete the part of process step, super important. That's why the quick lens, for example, do not fold, fold down, because that's a whole extra me mechanism that we don't need. One of the biggest traps for smart engineers is optimizing a, a thing that shouldn't exist. Yeah, so they'll um, just sit there and spin on that thing that's just like, why do we even have this in the first place? We, absolutely. When, when you go through college, you know, like studying physics engineering, I studied physics, uh, the, you have to answer the question that the mm -hmm. professor gives you. Mm -hmm. You don't get to say, this is the wrong question. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. But in reality, uh, we have far more degrees. When you're in reality, or the, you have all the degrees of freedom of reality. And so the first thing you should say is, this question is wrong. Yeah. And that's what you said last year. Yeah. I mean, you kind of said, like, it took us a long time to frame the question, even. Because yes. we didn't necessarily know what it was. It took ages it to frame the question. Yeah. I mean, it's just like The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Douglas Adams, best philosopher ever. Um, this book is so deep. Uh, people don't understand, uh, but like in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the Earth is a giant computer, right. and and the, and the Earth uh, it comes up with the answer, forty-two. Yeah. Yep. Um, and and to the question, like, so what's the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Answer is forty-two, and like they're like, what the hell? That doesn't make any sense. Right. It's like, oh, you. The really the hard part is the question. question. The answer is the easy part. You need a much more powerful computer to tell you what the question is. Right. And this is true. At the point at which you can properly frame the question, the answer is comparatively easy. As engineers, we're always trying to optimize things, make things better, trying to improve it. We can spend a lot of time doing that optimization. It's really in our nature to try and improve things, trying to optimize it, make it faster, make it better, improve certain elements. We often don't sit back and go, do we actually need it? KISS, you should be keeping it simple, trying to always simplify and remove instead of optimize. And only after you've tried to look at removing it and getting rid of certain elements is the time that you'll go into optimization. As you can spend a lot of time optimizing something that you may not need. You know, what I actually tell a team is like, everyone is a chief engineer. This is extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that uh, everyone must um, understand how the broadly speaking, all the systems in the vehicle work. Right. Um, and so that you, you, so you don't have subsystem optimization, because this is naturally what happens. You, the, the product errors reflect the organizational errors. What I'm trying to uh, have us all just uh, implement rigorously is uh, the sort of five-step process. Uh, first, make your requirements less dumb. Your requirements are definitely dumb. It uh, does not matter who gave them to you. It's particularly dangerous if a smart person gave you the requirements, because you might not question them enough. Yeah, you might take it as like gospel, like yes. I have to do this thing. Everyone's wrong, no matter who you are, everyone's yeah. wrong some of the time. A lot of the time in your head you're going, if I ask questions, they're going to think I am not know what I'm doing, they're going to think I'm incompetent, they're going to want to look for someone else instead of promoting me. And as engineers, you've got to realize that not one person can design a single building. And so we can miss some pretty basic things. You should always be open for discussions and asking those questions instead of just sitting back and going, oh my God, what are they going to think about me? I've got a link to a video here that about the 10 things that I wish I knew earlier about structural engineering. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, there's two ways that you can do this. You can either do this through Patreon, we've got links in the below description, or join as a YouTube member. And without your support and the support of my other Patreon and YouTube members, this type of content would not be possible. 
And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.